Hi, my name is Sasha. Welcome back to my channel, Sasha Reads, and this is my November anticipated releases list. First of all, sorry this is late. I know it should have been out last week, but I got hit with gastro, so let's just not go into that. I think I've got 16 books on this list today. I'm pretty excited for a lot of these. Like, obviously, I'm excited for all of these. I've got a most anticipated release on here. I've got ones that I found out from authors that I love, had no idea that coming out. So, yes. First of all, I'll start with Honeymoon for One by Rachel Bowdler that comes out on the 1st of November. And this is a queer romance set in the Canadian mountains and it's described as Sophie Kinsella meets Lindsay Kelk. I actually have this as a um, NetGalley arc. So let me go onto the NetGalley website and it will probably tell me more about it than Goodreads does. So just a disclaimer, all of the dates and information come off Goodreads. So if I am wrong, it's because Goodreads is wrong. So go for Goodreads, not me. Cheers. So Honeymoon for One is about Robin. She's had to cancel her wedding and so obviously she's had to cancel her honeymoon, but she's forgotten to cancel her honeymoon. So she goes along to the Canadian mountains. So the last thing she expects is to clash with standoffish ski instructor Neve. But despite their rocky start, these two unlikely people can't help but fall for each other under the starry Canadian skies. So yes, definitely keen for one, a Christmas romance, two, a sapphic romance. The next book comes out on the 1st of November and that is Jasmine Zumida Needs a Win by Susan Azim Boya. Now this is a YA novel about Jasmine and it's set in 1979. Now Jasmine is Iranian American, um, but not a lot of people know about that at her school. She tries to Cut, like just cover herself as white. She's about to go off to college and she's kind of told her in her college applications that she is the senior class president elect, but she, the election actually hasn't taken place yet. And so because she's running against this guy, Gerald, she's like, oh, I'm definitely gonna win against him. So it's no issue. Um, and then a real life international incident turns the election upside down. Iran suddenly dominates the nightly news and Gerald seizes the opportunity to stir up anti-Iranian hysteria at school and turns the electorate against her. So she's trying to like come to terms with like her Iranian heritage and then also basically like what's that got to do with her and with her school and her friends and all that. Um, so definitely a contemporary that I think I would really love. Like I'm not a big fan of YA contemporary anymore, but this has a hard hitting plot to it. So I definitely think I'm keen for it. The next book, is called She's Gone by David Bell. Now this is a thriller, a YA thriller, and it's about 17 year old Hunter Gifford who wakes up in the hospital on the night of homecoming and he's shocked to learn he and his girlfriend Chloe Summers have been in a terrible car accident. So Hunter now has no memory of the crash and his shock turns to horror when he is told Chloe's blood has been found in the car but she's disappeared. So now um, all his fellow classmates and his former best friends um, are pointing the finger at Hunter, saying that he's killed Chloe. So now Hunter's trying to take matters into his own hands by posting videos to prove his innocence. This next one is called The Ones We Burn by Rebecca Mix, and it comes out on the 1st of November as well. Now this is a sapphic YA fantasy, so I'm pretty keen for that. Now we've got Runka, who is tired of death. All she wants now is to be left alone, living out her days in Wichick's wild north with the coven that raised her, attempting to forget the horrors of her past. But when she is named Bloodwin, the next treaty bride to the human kingdom of Isidol, her coven sends her south with a single derivative. Sorry, someone's just outside taking pictures of their car. That's so random. A few moments later. Anyway sends herself with a single directive to kill him. Easy enough for a blood witch whose magic compels her to kill. Except the prince is gentle, kind, and terrified of her. He doesn't want to marry Ranka. He doesn't want to be king at all. And it's his sister, the wickedly smart, infuriatingly, infuriatingly beautiful Princess Aramis, who seems to be the real threat. So it's the, the relationship between Aramis and Ranka. And I believe we've got like himbo energy, but like, 
les so les lesbian himbo energy. I've been following Rebecca Mix on Instagram. I think the first time I saw about this book, I was like, I need this book in my hand. So this next one, oh my gosh. So it's Happenstance by Tessa Bailey. Tessa Bailey is bringing out a reverse harem, y'all. I am so excited. So we've got Elise Brandes, who's never won a Pulitzer, and she never will. At least not while she's delivering sandwiches at the Gotham Times, instead of working there as an actual reporter. Her only shot at seeing her byline is in print is to prove to the no-nonsense managing editor that she has a nose for news. And she's got just the story to grab her elusive attention. Right after, she delivers this turkey on ciabatta. Chasing down leads brings Elise to Roosevelt Island, but just when the trail of clues begins to take shape, she gets stuck. Literally. On a cable car with three strangers who couldn't be more different. An uptight rugby coach, a construction worker, and a former adult film star she pretends not to recognize a little too well. At first, Elise wants nothing more to be rescued ASAP. An hour later, everything has changed. By pure happenstance, four separate journeys have collided in a tense, meaningful way. Suddenly, disentangling their lives feels more impossible than winning that Pulitzer. Good thing Elise is too busy proving herself at work to consider three boyfriends. Nobody has time for that. Even if they make giving in feel oh so right. But three heads are better than one and these learners will teach themselves to work together to win Elise over forever. And more importantly, keep their dirty socks off her floor. I'm so excited. I'm actually listening to Tessa Bailey's um, It Happened One Summer at the moment. And I forgot how much like her books are just so easy to read and like get entranced. So it's a nice fun and I'm excited to see how she will do this reverse harem. The next book is Better Than Fiction by Alexa Martin. Now I saw this and I'm like, Alexa Martin, why does that author sound so familiar? She wrote the Fumbled series, which was about a like football players um, finding love. And I was, I really enjoyed it. I read the first couple of books a couple of years ago now. And I'm so excited for this one because this one is bookish. So we've got a self proclaimed book hater and a bookstore manager. And she is the book hater, right? She inherits the bookstore. So yeah, he like curates a book bucket list for her and just, oh, I'm just, okay, no, no, no. Sorry, he's an author. He's not the, he's not the manager of the shop. Anyway, I just, I read this in the X list by Evie Mitchell. He loved books. She didn't see the point of them. And I just, I love that trope. And so I'm so excited to read this book by Alexa Martin. And plus also look at the cover, it's gorgeous. This Better Than Fiction comes out on the 8th of November as well. The next book I wanna talk about is From LA to London with Love by Elizabeth Luley. And this comes out on the 11th of November. And now this I heard about from Evie Mitchell. So I believe she is a bisexual single mother and he is a movie star who's kind of been, not shunned, but there's been an incident in Hollywood. So he's like gone away to London to kind of fix his image a bit. So Sophie Shah thinks dating an American movie star is a terrible idea. For start, she's got her hands full with her baby son and new business venture. And she's just not that interested in red carpets, fancy parties and private jets. Anyway, there's no man the man recently voted the sexiest man alive would be interested in a single mom who lives with her parents, right? Publicly humiliated movie star Chris Trent has fled to London to film a period drama. Focusing on redeeming his reputation, improving his questionable British accent, a new relationship is the last thing on his mind. And Chris doesn't pack light, he brings all his baggage with him. Sophie's and Chris's worlds couldn't be more different, but as their relationship unfolds, they begin to think that maybe, just maybe, they could have a future together. But some baggage is hard to offload. Next book, I haven't read the first one, but I own it, it's on my TBR, but we've got Whiteout by, it's a bunch of stories by Donnell Clayton, Tiffany D. Jackson, Nick Stone, Angie Thomas, Ashley Woodfolk, and Nicola Toon. So they all wrote Blackout together. And so now they're bringing Christmas love stories out and I'm so excited. 
This next one is probably one of the most ones I'm excited for. I've pre-ordered the book. It should be here, hopefully on the release date. But that is Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion. So this is the second book in her Legendborn series and it's following Brie after the events of Legendborn and what might happen between her and Selwyn Kane and um, Nick. I think it's the other guy. Um, obviously, I'm not a big fan of Nick. I'm a Selwyn girl through and through. So yes, super excited. I cannot wait to read what happens to Brie. This next book comes out on the 10th of November and that is What Was Meant To Be by QB Tyler. I'm loving QB Tyler's work. She writes very taboo stories. So definitely, if you're into that, check her out. If you're not, don't do it. But What Was Meant To Be is a, another age gap forbidden romance. And so we've got two years ago, Jacob Price walked away. After a whirlwind steamy affair, my father's best friend broke my heart. He told me things were too complicated, messy wrong that we could never be together i knew he loved me but the fear of ruining our family was too great with too much at stake he sacrificed our hearts and ended it now he's back and he still wants me he still loves me but now i'm engaged to another man oh i know it's just going to wreck me it's going to ruin me oh i'm so excited are you okay? All right, this next one comes out on the 15th of November, and that is Shipped Wrecked by Olivia Dade. This is the third book in her spoiler alert series, and it follows the two actors that have been on that island. They, like, film on the island on the show. So in the, sh like, spoiler alert series, there's this show that is very similar to Game of Thrones, and there's these two actors that have been talked about in the other books and they finally have their own story and I'm really excited because there have been like inklings of that those who have hooked up in the past but not anymore they're just like besties and they are both thick and I'm so excited so I have a feeling it's going to be like second chance but God, and like friends to lovers does that make sense? So this next book comes out on the 15th of November as well, and it is uh, The Lies We Tell by Katie Zhao. This is a YA social actors, excuse me. Well, it's not really YA because it's set on college, but it's a The Lies We Tell is a social activism, we all belong here anthem crossed with a thriller and with a rival to romance relationship. Um, so we've got Anna Zhu who's moving out of her parents' home and into the dorms across town as she starts freshman year at the local prestigious Brookings University. But her parents and the struggling Chinese bakery Sweetie aren't far from campus or from mind either. At Brookings, Anna wants to keep up her stellar academic performance and to investigate the unsolved campus murder of her childhood babysitter. While there, while there, she also finds a familiar face, her middle school rival, Chris Liu. The Lou's also happen to be the zoo family's business rivals once they open Sunny's, a trendy new bakery on Sweetie's block. Chris is cute, but still someone to be wary of until a vandal hits Sunny's and Anna matches the racist tag with a clue from her investigation. So that sounds really exciting. I'm loving the YA thrillers at the moment. Oh, we've got Trope by Stella Stevenson. So this is about Maggie, whose true constants in her life have always been books and her anxiety. A close third is that she's been in love with her best friend's older brother for her whole life. She's written her first book and basically the um, like better readers are like, you characters have no chemistry. So she starts to fake date somebody. So she's fake dating Dean. So hopefully it'll like help her get romance back into her books. But then there's quiet grumpy Mac and the more time Maggie spends with Dean, the more Mac appears in her life and her thoughts. And now I don't know who the best friend's brother is. So is it Dean? Is it Mac? I don't know, but I'm excited. It's giving me American roommate experiment vibes because of the faking dating sort of aspect. This next one comes out on the 22nd November. I haven't read the first book, but I will soon, don't worry. Uh, but this is Astrid Parker Doesn't Fail by Ashley Herring Blake. Ashley Herring Blake also wrote Delilah Green Doesn't Care. So this is the second book in that um, series. And this follows Astrid Parker, 
obviously, who is an interior designer who's learning to re rebuild her love life from the ground up with zero blueprints. Um, so she broke up with her fiance a year ago and she's been focused on her career. Her friends might even say she's obsessed. But when Prue Everwood asked her to be the designer for the Everwood Inn's renovation that will be broadcast on a popular home improvement show, Astrid knows this is the answer to everything that is wrong with her life. However, Astrid never planned on Jordan, Prue's granddaughter and lead carpenter for the Inn's renovation, who despises every modern design decision Astrid makes. So, definitely keen for some feathers getting ruffled between these two rivals. And like one looks prim and proper and the other one looks like down and grim and dirty. I don't know who Astrid Parker is, so hopefully I get more excited to read this once I read Delilah Green. This next book is called Two Wrongs Make a Right by Chloe Lees. This comes out on the 22nd of November as well. And it's about Jamie Westenberg and B. Wilmot who have nothing in common except a meat disaster and the mutual understanding that they couldn't be more wrong for each other. But when the people closest to them play Cupid and trick them into going on a date, Jamie and B. realize they have something else in common after all, an undeniable need for revenge. Soon their plan is in place, fake date obnoxiously and convince the meddlers they're madly in love, then break up spectacularly and dash their hopes, putting an end to their matchmaking madness once and for all. So definitely keen for this fake dating romance and look at her, she's got some tattoos on her arm. I love that. All right, two more books. We've got We Deserve Monuments by Jazz Hemmons. Basically I put this on my list because the cover art looks like Zendaya and I love that. And so this one comes out on the 29th of November as well. And this is about 17 year old Avery Anderson who is convinced her senior year is ruined when she's uprooted from her life in DC and forced into the hostile home of her terminally ill grandmother, Mama Letty. The tension between Avery's mum and Mama Letty makes for a frosty arrival and unearthed past drama they refuse to talk about. Every time Avery tries to look deeper, she's turned away, leaving her desperate to learn the secrets that split her family in two. While tempers flare in her avoidant family, Avery finds friendship in unexpected places, in Simone Cole, her captivating next door neighbor, and Jade Oliver, the daughter of the town's most prominent family, whose mother's murder remains unsolved. As the three girls grow closer and Avery and Simone's friendship blossoming into romance, the sharp edged opinions of their small southern town began to hint at something insidious underneath. The racist history of Bardell, Georgia, is rooted in Avery's family in ways you can't even imagine. With Mama Letty's health dwindling every day, Avery must decide if digging for the truth is worth toppling the delicate relationship she built in Bardell, or if some things are better left unburied. So we got Sapphic, we got BIPOC, I am excited. And last but not least, we have The Hemsworth Effect by James Weir. I have talked about this in my Nat Gally November TBR. So this is um, about Amy McGuire, who is about to lose everything because she can't afford to pay the rent. Her engagement is also on an unofficial uh, timeout since her fiance doesn't know what he wants. And so the last thing she needs is a surprise visit from her micro influencer niece looking to build her brand. And so we've got Amy who gets tangled up with a group of influencers turned reality TV stars, exposing her to absolute worst of humanity. But somewhere amid this mother of all messes, there just might be a silver lining. Amy has been searching for. All she needs to do is embrace the one thing she's been fighting so hard against, change. So definitely keen to read this one and I will have a vlog out for this book. Don't you worry. So those are all the books that are coming out in November that I'm really excited for. Hopefully I put some more on your radar. Let me know down below. Are there any books on here that you think I should have put on the list that I don't know about? And if you got to the end of this video, put a purple heart in the comments because I'm wearing purple shirt. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget you can have me on Goodreads, Instagram, and Twitter. They're all at Sash Reads. You can also like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more videos by me. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you next time. Bye.